Welcome to Backbenches. I hope everything is going well in your life. Today we are launching with our first playlist of plant physiology and under that playlist we are going to start our first chapter which is absorption by roots. We have absorption by roots as the first chapter under the playlist of plant physiology and I have divided this chapter as a whole into seven parts. The first is about introduction which is going to be today's class. Second is roots and its advantages. Third is going to be of osmosis and its types. Fourth class is about terms of osmosis and its significance and tonicity. The next class is flaccidity and turgidity and its significance which is the fifth class. The sixth class is going to be about root pressure, transportation and forces contributing to ascent of sap. And the seventh class, which is the last class, is going to be about experiments. Apart from all these classes, I have created a separate doubt class at the end of the chapter in which I'll be answering all of your doubts. So make sure whatever doubts you all are having, you write those doubts in the comment section. And at the end of this chapter, I'll be shortlisting the doubts which are most frequently asked and most commonly asked and the most important ones as well and then I'll answer them in the doubt class. So let us start with the introduction today. In the introduction class, we will know about what is plant physiology. But before understanding what is plant physiology, we need to understand what is the meaning of the term physiology. So physiology is a branch of biology that deals with the functions of living organisms. Physiology is that branch of biology that deals with the functions of the living organism. So any living organism has its own separate set of functions and to maintain those functions are in the science physiology. By this term, now you can understand what is the meaning of plant physiology. Plant physiology is a branch of biology that deals with the life functions and metabolism of the plant. It is the branch of biology that deals with the life functions and metabolism of the plant. And hence, it takes care of all the cells, tissues, organs, organ systems of, of the plant and the plant as well. So, it is that particular branch of science that takes care of the plant as a whole. And also, it takes care of the functions that the plant goes through. And under plant physiology, we have the term absorption by roots. So plant physiology is a branch of biology that takes care of absorption by roots as well. Now before understanding absorption of by roots or the definition of absorption, we need to know the general meaning of the term absorption. Now absorption in general means soaking up or sucking up. So anything which soaks up or sucks up something is said to be performing absorption. Similarly, absorption in plants refers to a biological process because it has connection with the plant biology in which plants absorb certain substances from the ground which are important for their survival, which are important for their survival in nature. So absorption in plants means it refers to a particular process, it refers to a biological process and in that process plants absorb certain substances certain substances which are important for the survival of the plants in nature now what kind of substances plants basically absorb two types of substances one is minerals and the other is water now minerals are present in the form of ions or salts and water is present in the general way as H2 in the liquid form Certain examples of minerals are nitrogen, magnesium, sulfur, potassium, phosphorus and calcium. All of these minerals has their separate functions in plants. Therefore, they are very very important for the survival of the plants. Now we need to know that why plants need to absorb water and minerals. The need for absorption of water and minerals. We will look into that separately. First, we are going to understand why do plants need water? Why do plants need to absorb water? 
so the first important point for which plants need water is is photosynthesis we all know photosynthesis is a process in which food is prepared plants produce food through the process of photosynthesis and during the process of photosynthesis water is required as a raw material so photosynthesis requires water for the production of glucose in plants the second point is transpiration transpiration itself is a process of losing water hence to lose water sufficient amount of water must be present in the plants so transpiration for transpiration to take place water is also important hence plants need to absorb water to lose water in the form of water vapor third very important point is transportation transportation of two different things first is of water and minerals from the roots to the leaves and then after photosynthesis has taken place and food has been prepared the prepared food is transported from the leaves to the various parts of the plant so transportation of two different things are happening here water and minerals from the roots to the leaves and then the prepared food from the leaves to the various parts of the plant and the last important point is mechanical stiffness which is also known as turgidity which we will be discussing in our further parts of the chapter for the for the time being turgidity means to provide rigidity plants need some specific amount of rigidity for their survival next we will look into the need for absorption of minerals this is a very very important portion of this particular chapter because a lot of questions come from this chapter now nitrogen nitrogen is a very important mineral for protein synthesis and growth of plant so nitrogen is very very essential for the plant's growth then the second was magnesium and iron they both are required for the synthesis of chlorophyll magnesium and iron both the elements synthesize chlorophyll and indirectly they help in photosynthesis because chlorophyll is required for photosynthesis third is potassium potassium is a constituent of the protoplasm protoplasm is present in the plant cells and potassium is a constituent of the protoplasm hence it is very important for the formation of the plant cells phosphorus promotes nuclear and cell division hence it affects the growth of the plant calcium maintains the semi permeability of the cell membrane we all know plant cells have both plant plant cells have both cell wall and cell membrane cell membrane is sem, semi permeable and cell wall is permeable so to maintain the semi permeable nature of the cell wall calcium mineral is needed so calcium is very very important for the plant so that is all about today's session today's session was a very very small session because it is the introductory class See you all in the next session till then stay happy and stay safe